you, Valérie. I mean, and with this, we will start our... Uh, <laughs> so as Valérie mentioned, as he talked about, this forum has been designed to bring all of you together, our Alif family, to meet, to exchange, to talk, to raise questions, to have ideas. So we encourage you all to do that as much as possible. And from our end, we've designed a program that we hope will allow you to do just that. So the daytime program is divided into three different components, plenary sessions, like we're about to start. This is designed to be more of a panel discussion, people on the stage talking and, and having a discussion about a larger theme. Next, we have workshops. These are more technical uh, gatherings where speakers have been invited to prepare presentations to talk about some of their concrete solutions to um, protecting heritage in various components and areas. And we highly encourage question and answer periods as well during these sessions so that you can really start to talk and exchange ideas on a specific topic. Next, we have Majlis. These are divided regionally. So we have Iraq, Sahel, Afghanistan, Yemen. These majlis are informal. What we would really like is for you to talk about regional questions, challenges, solutions, concrete examples. And we have invited some people to come in advance with some concrete examples from their own projects to get the ball rolling. But after, we highly encourage as much discussion as possible. So that's the program for the daytime. The nighttime program has been kindly offered to us by our partners, the Department of Culture and Tourism at DCT. And we have, and they have planned for us two sets of activities. Tonight, directly following the end of the Majlis, we are all invited to either walk or take a short shuttle bus ride to the Khazar al Hosen, which is the oldest building in Abu Dhabi where we will have a site visit followed by a dinner. And tomorrow night, we are all invited to the Louvre for a guided tour followed by a cocktail in the art lounge. So we hope that you will be able to join us and our partners at those two events. Next, more about just sort of housekeeping things. Um, so to all the speakers who are invited to the plenary sessions, when you come on stage, just a quick reminder to hold the microphone sort of as close, sort of close to your chin because this session is being recorded and we have interpreters, so we need to capture your voice as much as we can. Second, as I'm sure you've already found because I see people wearing them, we have headsets. There is simultaneous translation for nearly all of the sessions. So just a note, if you could try to remember to leave your headset at the door when you leave, and then pick up a new headset at the next door. It will help us keep track of the technology as much as possible. So thank you for your kind consideration in that. And finally, we invite you to go and see the Aleph exhibition, which is outside the Cultural Foundation in the arcade. We're kind of forcing you to go by it tonight, so you'll, you will see it. But if you want to spend a little bit more time with it than um, during breaks or you know, whenever you have a moment, to go look at the panels. But additionally, there's an augmented reality component to the exhibition, and we have provided um, iPads at the entrance to the Cultural Foundation, and my colleagues are there to guide you through. And you can, you know, there are, my favorite part are the um, 3D scans, and you can sort of move and walk through the Arch of Stesiphon on your iPad. Um, it's pretty cool. So please, I encourage you to check it out. Um, and I think that's it for all of the housekeeping and announcements. So let's start with the first panel, which is six years on taking stock of Aleph. So I would like to call to the stage, please, Her Excellency Katerina Shuyeva, Mr. Wendayan. Thank you. Please, your... Dr. Laith Hussein. Please. 
Dr. Samuel Sidibe. Hello. Dr. Mariette Vesterman. And Ms. Benedict de Montlaure. Welcome, thank you, thank you. It's lovely to see you all here. After months and months of planning to be on this stage with you, it's a great honor. <clears throat> so let's get things started. Six years ago, Aleph was founded as a re one of the responses to abate the destruction of cultural heritage in conflict areas. And this session is really to talk about more about the context in which Aleph was founded, the reasons, the feelings at the time, to go over a little bit about the development of Aleph, some of its ma major achievements in your opinion, and to think not too much because we don't want to steal from Valérie's final plenary session, but think a little bit about the future as well. So, Samuel Sidibe, if I can start with you, please. So you are from Mali, and we all remember how cultural heritage was being targeted for destruction in the 2010s. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what it was like at the time and, um, and some of the events that happened and how you felt as a Malian and as a heritage professional? Okay. Uh, merci uh, beaucoup de me donner la Thank you. Um, thank you, Sandra, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, giving me the chance to talk about the situation in Mali and the, uh, the, 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 the work. The, um, we in Mali, we had uh, the, um, the uh, assaults and attacks by jihadists uh, in Tombouctou who have uh, um, have, um, have, um, have prevented the population from doing the ritual and, and uh, for celebrating their um, uh, um, uh, um, so, so life and to use their, uh, and the uh, the uh, the uh, minaret of Tombouctou, it a one of one was one of the uh, targeted for this jihadist donk. Uh, um, as well, the, the is, uh, there is a situation of uh, instability and insecurity in the country. The the, the north of the country is uh, still at, under uh, under. Um, and witnessing violence and and uh, and since 2008 and 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 as well uh, we have witnessed uh, the massive destructions of the foolish uh, the the pays de Gonf. we have we have a wealth of um, uh, of uh, um, of heritage and uh, and this is uh, constitute for us a, a big preoccupation for us in Mali. Um, we haven't been able to to um, improve the security situation and the uh, the uh, 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 and the heritage is still in in jeopardy. Uh, the, so the risk is. Um, is as well, add to that the risk of uh, climate change, which is a like a, an actual reality in uh, in uh, in Mali, where the desertification, uh, which for many factors are preventing uh, the the tra the cultural traditions to to uh, uh, to subsist, and this is has 
is, is affecting the whole country and the trans the uh, movement of the of the population and other factors are the um, um, the desertification which has been think so uh, uh, crippling the, the movement of population so this is uh, th this risk are st still in eff effective and been having an effect on the on the heritage in Mali um, in at Alif we uh, we were um, uh, in Mali, we think about what can Alif do to help us in uh, in preserving our um, uh, um, uh, our heritage. In terms of, uh, uh, we have seen uh, 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 photos of this in the, in the videos which have been played uh, beforehand. So, um, and I think that uh, we will see s some actions taken in the in the months uh, to come, and uh, it. Uh, we need some rest restoration our works can will be will be brought to the uh, laskar muhammad and as as well like sustainable uh, conservation is very important that's this conservation this sustainable um, conservation uh, will allow populations to continue to uh, practice their uh, uh, traditional uh, rituals and traditional uh, life and by bringing and reviving some elements, uh, natural elements of uh, those who know this region and uh, no, uh, they know that the that the certification has uh, has uh, erased and has uh, Abolished all the all the uh, instruments and and the, and the equipments they needed for construction and for restoration. So uh, this will allow as well to f to create a, um, an, a, a a momentum for for to resume uh, con the construction works and the restoration works and uh, in a, and as well there is like a a, a very a very strong uh, the, um, uh, erosions um, uh, being uh, hit this part of the of the region and we need to to fight that don't uh, Alif as well will inter inter will intervene as well to to for, to conserve or to safeguard the architectures of the monuments uh, there in this area uh, which has been victim to uh, to uh, to violence and to um, attacks uh, uh, in this region ha the violence that have been witnessed by this region have uh, not only had their toll on on the monuments as as well on the population who who have to who were displaced to uh, other secure areas and the should uh, to, to me i would like uh, to, uh, to say that we uh, and the restoration and the uh, the conservation of the of the uh, heritage is not it is is at a collective and a responsibility and as well the engagement of the population is uh, uh, is important and the the the, the population hagar who have been victim of all these uh, attacks and all this violence um um a, what we need to take to to build is confidence for these population to return to these areas so contributions need to go to these areas who have been like uh, this, the at uh, the center of this um, um, uh, violence and then the on uh, the intervention of alif they must have access or must reach out to to the population of of and the communities and uh, thank you for uh, your good listening Thank you for this. Uh, it has you have um, mentioned many uh, bullet points that we will be discussing throughout this uh, session. Thank you for your uh, uh, intervention and. Uh, a, the situation is very dangerous and that has many effects on the on the communities uh, and we have to consider as well what is before and after the conflict uh, and as you have said the, the population the whole population in Mali and regions and Alif uh, 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 has a lot to do in uh, for for the Mali for in Mali dr uh, Dave I would like to uh, for the director of the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage in Iraq. And uh, when Daesh was targeting cultural heritage in your country, can you talk to us a little bit about your feelings at the time, also as a cultural heritage professional, but also as, as an Iraqi citizen to, to witness this destruction? 
شكرا جزيلا لهذا ال Thank you so much for such a great forum, which would manifest the vision of Aleph on the preservation and the safeguarding of the heritage. And because Daesh and ISIS has very violent attacks against our heritage sites in the north side, the north part of Iraq, especially in Mosul, the Daesh has exploded and blew up most of the mosques and the churches, in addition to the world heritage sites that were at risk against uh, because of uh, the violent actions of uh, ISIS and the Daesh, and they have dis make a destruction to such uh, sites. As you can see, destruction is in Mosul. It's a full-scale destruction. They haven't left anything because they destroy everything that represents the harmony among the Iraqi citizens. And we appreciate uh, the support of uh, Aleph. And in Iraq, uh, we represent the real people of Iraq. We have uh, many projects in Iraq. We have 25 projects in Iraq that were initiated by Aleph. Since its uh, inception, the, Ira the Aleph has real partnership with Iraq because Iraq is so affected by Daesh activities. We have a real harmony and intimacy between Aleph and the Department of Culture and Antiquities in Iraq. And now you can find everywhere in Iraq, you have a great contribution of Aleph in each part of Iraq regarding safeguarding the heritage site. It's not only about reconstruction. It's not only about reconstruction but and restoration, but to train the people and to have qualified teams for restoration of heritage sites which reflect the reality of Iraq community. Alif is continuing its work in Iraq after such destruction. I expect that we would have more projects which are aiming at protecting and safeguarding the heritage and the civilization of Iraq. So Aleph is not concerned only with the, the areas affected by Daesh. For example, two years ago, there was a collapse of the biggest rainbow in El Madain. So as a quick response by Aleph, it has sent experts to the region and they have made an assessment of the damages and they have been working greatly to preserve this heritage and also And also they try to avoid the collapse of such a heritage monument. And also the second stage, there will be full reconstruction of this monument and also to avoid the full collapse of such a monument. So Aleph is extending its support not only to the areas where the terrorism was doing such activities, but other areas also. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And for bringing up the Arch of Stesiphon as well as, the, as an example of um, another kind of not targeted by Daesh, as you say, but also a very, very important site that, that needs protection and we saw uh, some images of it in the video earlier and if you see the AR app later you can 
tour around it as well. So, but thank you very much for that, for, 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 your, for your comments and also for bringing up that indeed we're working together across the country. It's not just in the north, but in the south as well. And we have um, 25 projects plus, you know, with you. And for that, um, you know, we greatly value our partnership. Uh, I think Iraq is one of the uh, countries that benefited much from Alif and uh, many happy turns for Alif Foundation. Shukran Jazeelan. Benedict, if we can turn to you for a few moments, please. So now you're president and CEO of the World Monuments Fund, but in 2016, 2017, you were cultural counselor of the French Embassy to the United States. And at that time, you organized an event at the Met dedicated to the idea of Aleph. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that event and the feelings at the time? Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. I think it's still. Is it working? No. no. OK, thank you. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Sandra, for inviting me to speak in my previous capacity, in <laughs> fact. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we are all passionate about history, so let's do a little bit of history of a leaf. And um, so indeed, in 2016, in August, all of a sudden, I received a phone call from Paris saying, can you organize an event in three weeks at the Met? So I don't know if <laughs> any of you have tried to organize an event in New York. It's impossible to have the Met in three weeks. And it's because the president has this idea of launching a foundation for cultural heritage preservation. And um, it was all generated, as a, the, the starting point was the destruction of the Temple of Bell in Palmyra that we all remember uh, in 2015. And following that, I think there was a general awareness that we needed to act, that all the mechanism and institutions in place were not enough. So uh, at that time, I know Barisa Ariari played an important role in convincing President Hollande to commission a report from Jean-Luc Martinez trying to explore what could be done to protect heritage in front of terrorist acts. Um, and that led him to uh, appoint Jack Long and to start talking, in particular, with the United Arab Emirates about what could be created. So at the UN General Assembly in September, he we organized that event where uh, the whole idea was to announce the creation of a foundation, at that time it was not called Alif, uh, that they were going to raise 100 million, and it was very daring because at that time there was no money either. So 100 million from public and private donor, and that was also part of the innovation element of this, is that for once it was not only governments coming together, but the governments with the civil society. Mm -hmm. And the goal uh, here was to create an institution that could act quickly. I think this first step of asking us to organize an event in three weeks at the Met <laughs> was a good example of what led to the, the temple of, uh, of Ali. And in fact, we got not only the Met, President Hollande, Jack Long, but also the vice president at that time, Joe Biden. So that was uh, pretty good. And, um, and, and, and the idea was to act quickly to preserve heritage in front of terrorist acts. And I, we're going to talk about that later and in my current capacity at World Monument Fund, but I think that's really one of the interesting development uh, of Alif is that it's not anymore just reacting uh, to terrorist act, but it's much wider, uh, exploring all the interaction between heritage and crisis. Mm -hmm. The, the other element of this uh, moment in New York uh, preceding the conference here in Abu Dhabi was to try to gather both a board and a scientific committee uh, as international as possible and to have a great representation from every region of the world. And we had the pleasure of creating meetings with Mariette, who is here, and uh, so that was very fruitful, as you can see, and Richard uh, in, in Washington. And so that was also the ambition of Alif at the beginning, to have an organization as wide as possible, as international as possible, uh, gathering all the regions of the world. And the last word about that is that I think my surprise as organizing all of that in New York was to see uh, what enthusiasm and why, what openness uh, was there 
because I think there was indeed a general awareness that something had to be done, mm -hmm. that there was a necessity for such a foundation, and everybody was grateful uh, for all the first partners to come together and to make it happen. Mm. Thank you. That's, that's dumb. It's um, gratifying to know that Alif's way of action, action, action started from the very first moment and that the, the elan has not died down at all, that there's still this energy, that there's this reactivity, the responsiveness, but also this, this feeling, I think that everybody in this room still feels of just of general goodwill and energy to to get this work done. Um, so it's been, you know, after six plus years, the fact that th this feeling um, is still burning in us, is, I think speaks a lot to the importance of what we're all trying to do. Thank you. Uh, Diane, I would like to come to you now, please. So, okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so China has been associated with Alif since the beginning. Can you talk to us a little bit about why cultural heritage protection is so important for China and why also did China choose to join Aleph uh, when it did? Okay, thank you very much for your question. I would like to grasp this opportunity to express my happiness, sincere happiness to be here within my family. You miss, I missed you a lot uh, during these last three years. Uh, I would like also to thank our host from the UAE government, from the Department of Culture and Tourism, and all the team from Alif for this great occasion to take part in this forum. Why the heritage is a priority in China? The response is simple and long at the same time. Why? China has a long history for more than 500 years, uh, uh, the heritage constitute the middle of uh, this uh, rich culture and of this resistant nation. Uh, herit cultural heritage constitute for us the um, pride, uh, the national pride that identifies the chi China. Protection is important for this cultural heritage. It is not an easy task. This is why it should be put as a priority to mobilize all necessary resources, politics, economics, financial, cultural, and human in order to uh, have uh, and protect uh, this uh, heritage and prevent it from any harms. And also, uh, to safeguard and promote uh, the cultural diversity at the world uh, level. Uh, it is no, we would like to know that throughout the years, uh, thanks to the president's uh, interest in uh, cultural heritage and his extraordinary leadership, the protection and valorization of the cultural heritage became a consensus, a solid one of great importance inside uh, China, which is at the same time political, economical, cultural, and social. Uh, now it is clear that China decided uh, to join Alif uh, thanks uh, to the influence of many political wills at the high level of the state, uh, including the UAE, France, China, and definitely many other countries whose representatives are here uh, uh, meeting today uh, like six years ago. In addition, politics uh, is n are not the only res reason for this. Uh, politics co uh, constitute, um, c consider this as an important cause to keep the memory of the humanity and help people in difficulties and prevent uh, the uh, concerned spirits. Uh, this is related to the culture of China that uh, respects uh, the uh, generosity of the human being's nature and uh, 
practically China wants to continue in this ambitious goal and contribute in building together a community at the cultural national level with a shared future. Finally, China believes in uh, cooperation and coordination. Lalif uh, was born uh, thanks to a partnership between states, institutions, foundations, uh, and also uh, uh, special individuals. We are ready to uh, enter in deep uh, in this uh, uh, in depth, this uh, partnership uh, to protect it from vandalism, from illicit trafficking, uh, and other dangers, as well as the 21st uh, century uh, um, uh, challenges like the artificial intelligence, the climate change, big data, and uh, also. We would like to say that no mod our modalities and protection of the cultural heritage is important in order to be more adapt to this world that is in, co in continuous mutation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And it's very interesting to think about the, as you were talking about the the confluence of Chinese ideals and Aleph's ideals and how they come together and, and complement each other, really. It's very, very interesting. And, and also you bring up other points that, that haven't been raised yet about the, the, the fight against the illicit traffic of cultural goods, which we all know is a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Um, and, um, and I mean, and, and new technologies as well. And so thank you very much for bringing up those, those new points also. So I would like to, we've talked a little bit about the context in which Aleph was founded, some of the people who were there at the time. Let's talk now a little bit about the development of Aleph since that moment. So Mariette, you are an eminent professional and you've been a member of the Aleph Foundation Board since the very beginning. And as Benedict said, you were there really, really, really from the beginning. So after now four and a half years of concrete action of Aleph in the field, could you share with us some conclusions that you have about Aleph results and, and also maybe about its governance to date? Thank you very much, Sandra, for leading us through the journey so beautifully. I want to say uh, first of all, how special it is to be here in Abu Dhabi, one of the founding um, members of uh, Alif, of course, together with the government of France. And uh, before I answer your question, which I do want to do, I want to pay special tribute to Benedict here on the podium, who, together with Jack Lang, she represented Jack Lang and President Hollande so beautifully as the senior cultural diplomat in New York and to the point of action, 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 which is the motto of Aleph, I want to say you just saw it in, in action. Benedict just wouldn't take no for an answer. So she would come, you know, at the time I was at the foundation, I didn't have my current job as vice chancellor of NYU Abu Dhabi. I was at the time one of these private funders that Aleph, or Aleph didn't exist yet, but that the government of France and the government of Abu Dhabi we're trying to bring together on the model of the Global Fund for the remediation of the great pandemics, uh, HIV AIDS, uh, malaria, and tuberculosis. And using that model, that public-private model, where mostly governments support and work together to act more quickly and effectively on the ground in remediating these pandemics out of their offices in Geneva, an organization that's existed for more than 20 years, using that global fund model and applying it to cultural heritage was the great innovation, I think. It wasn't as if there weren't great cultural heritage protection organizations. We've heard from several of them already today. UNESCO is a critical partner. But we all know that more of us need it. And Benedict just never took no for an answer when I said, well, I'm a little bit busy. Mellon isn't really doing this. And so it was really uh, going working through the conference here in December 2017 in Abu Dhabi, seeing how much had been accomplished by the two countries, bringing these leaders together from all around the world and from public and private organizations. I think that was the founding principle and we've learned so much in the evolution of Alif, how important that has been. So that is what I would want to say 
um, when, I ask, when you ask about the evolution, the numbers that you've heard speak for themselves. You know, we started maybe in eight countries and before long, we've now, we're now working in more than three dozen countries. Uh, more than, you know, hundreds of projects. When you hear about the projects as you later will today, I think in uh, Ukraine, for example, when we talk about Ukraine as an initiative, we're talking about 150 projects. It's that sort of scale that we were able to achieve that I think has been a very important part of the journey. And I think it is all about bringing governments and private partners together, NGOs and experts, funders, and especially the people on the ground. Aleph was not created to replace all these other entities at all. We're supposed to be value added and bring funds quickly where we can. We don't do the work on the ground ourselves. We work with all of the partners, so many of you here represented today, and we're very grateful that you're here. To the action, action, action mantra that His Excellency Mohammed Al Mubarak has already referred to, I would like to add collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. We cannot do this work alone. We don't want to do it alone. And that has been a very fundamental uh, principle uh, of the work. The last thing I will say about the evolution and our governance conversations over the years with this amazing board that uh, Wendayan and others have been part of from the start is that we've begun to see better why there is a longevity need for Alif. Our immediate emergency uh, is, of course, was the Daesh attacks. But we quickly began to see that if you're going to be an effective cultural heritage protection uh, organization, you need to work and look across the world. All human beings make cultural heritage. We hand things out on to others. Our inheritance is heritage, right? That's we hand it on. All cultures do it, all countries do it, all peoples do it, all religions do it. And so that unites us as human beings. But as um, our executive director, Valérie, has already said, it also can divide us. And of course, what we really began to see more and more clearly, I think, are these patterns where cultural heritage can be weaponized, mm -hmm. used to attack other cultural heritage, the heritage of others. And so I think our mission has become yet clearer that we are here to help build peace, a sustainable future for all. And in that regard, I was very moved, as I'm sure we all were, by the testimony from this marvelous man talking about the Minaret of Jam and how much had lost, had been lost, not just with the, the attacks on the minaret and the destruction of the minaret, but with the loss of ethnic diversity, people coming together and celebrate this heritage we all share. I think that's the most important lesson that I've learned, even as a long-standing art historical professional, from the work that Aleph does. Thank you. Thank you. The, I'm, I mean, thank you for highlighting what my job of talking about how many projects we've done, <laughs> we've funded in, in so short a time. Um, but also for bringing up the point of this weaponization of cultural heritage, that it is at, this, at the same time the thing that unites us or communities or people, but, it, but then because of this unifying factor becomes a target and that it becomes this weapon of war and, uh, and for that reason needs to be on the international stage, prominently on the international stage to be discussed at fora like this, but also across all of the different kinds of partners that you mention, um, so that we are collectively aware of what it concretely means to destroy cultural heritage and the importance of protecting it. Um, the, I'd like to turn now to, to Katerina. Thank you very much for joining us amidst, um, you know, to, to take the time to come all this way and to be with us. It is greatly appreciated. And so Katerina, you come from a, one of a country, a country that is now Ukraine. Well, it is not now Ukraine. A country that is Ukraine that is now a priority for Aleph and has been for the past year. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what it's like, been like to work, you know, with Aleph um, in this in a in a context of uh, of a crisis, 
Um, and, and maybe perhaps a few ideas of you know, your, the pressing needs that you have um, and, and how Aleph has been able to respond to, to those needs to date. Uh, so, um, uh, first of all, I would like, of course, to, to thank you very much, to uh, thank the Ali Foundation, to thank uh, Abu Dhabi City uh, authorities and the United Arab Emirates for the possibility to be in here. It, it was really a long, uh, long journey, and in our situation, it's difficult to to take this few days to to be here, and it's very important for all of us to have this voice. Uh, I will try not to put all, all my words in, in, in one speech and left something for next part of the discussion, but uh, I would like to, uh, to bring a, a little bit more context about the Ukrainian situation just to, to understand in, uh, the whole picture. Uh, so, um, uh, Ukraine uh, has a huge amount of uh, cultural heritage objects. Uh, there are more than 160,000 uh, objects of immovable heritage just registered, and who knows how many archaeological objects are still undiscovered, for example. And uh, we have uh, around 12 million objects uh, of the uh, museum fund, uh, in, I mean in uh, uh, municipal and national museums. Uh, it's the number without the private collections. And uh, we have a huge amount of uh, archival documents and different archives uh, in regional and national and uh, some organizational archives, etc., etc. And around 2,000 museums, also national and municipal. So uh, when uh, the full invasion, um, uh, armed invasion started, uh, we have faced it with a number of challenges. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have uh, this story is also long because when the Crimea Peninsula, as a part of Ukraine, was occupied uh, by Russia in 2014, uh, we started uh, at the time I was representative of civil society and museum community, and we started with a number of initiatives. And we have a very well self-organized uh, civil society. I mean, our professional communities like NGOs, uh, like uh, ICOM Committee, ICOMOS, and we hope to establish also, finally, the Blue Shield Committee in Ukraine. Uh, we try to, to work and we try uh, to share the responsibility with the state. And now, during my last year, I'm representative of the Ministry of Culture, and uh, I have, uh, I have to have, must have a, a kind of bird view. And uh, uh, we see a number of challenges and a strong and weak uh, side of this situation. So uh, we have faced it uh, with the uh, two two main challenges: how to guarantee the sustainability of of the state uh, bodies and uh, authorities at local levels, etc., because occupation and armed invasion started so fast and more or less unexpectedly for many people in Ukraine. And of course, we have a massive, uh, let's say, exodus of, of people from uh, the most dangerous regions. Uh, we have a deficit of professionals for the moment because a number of professionals have, has, have left the country. And we have, for example, uh, to face with uh, empty museums where we have to do uh, any kind of evacuations or something like that. And we also have to manage uh, all this protection and security measures. And uh, what was very important started uh, from the, the first day of this full-scale invasion, uh, we started to communicate. It was unprecedented uh, numbers of Zooms and other kind of communications. Uh, you know, uh, 24 hours per day, seven days or weeks, etc. Because uh, it was so important first to explain the situation, to obtain the support, and to make Ukrainian cultural heritage, and not only cultural heritage, but also in culture in general, visible for whole world. 
uh, it was a kind of a dilemma that, for example, many colleagues told. So you, you can or cannot cancel Russian culture, etc., just to prohibit them or something like that. But uh, we uh, have chosen the strategy to make Ukrainian culture and richness of this culture more open to the world. And that is why we have contacted with a number of partners. And uh, uh, what I must say, it's my great appreciation, uh, my personal and from our teams, and numerous teams in our country, uh, to Ali Foundation, because I will add also another word for previous uh, flexibility, mm -hmm. mutual understanding, flexibility, flexibility, and flexibility. <laughs> uh, because, thank you. Uh, because uh, when you have so massive attacks uh, on the whole territory, so when we uh, just uh, woke up at 21st of January of last year, we understood that every large city is under attack, under missiles attack. It's, uh, it was an unbelievable situation for many of us. And any of our plans about evacuation and other ideas just was broken in one minute because you do not have any safe place in the country. And uh, that, is, that was very important when we started to uh, these negotiations and dialogue about the support, financial support or in-kind support. It was very important to be as flexible as possible. Uh, just to uh, also to add a small detail, a number of members of uh, our very small uh, team on heritage uh, in the Ministry of Culture of that time were in different regions in this day. And during the next two months, we have, you know, mainly a couple of people uh, just uh, almost all, always uh, online and a number of our members, team members, just in shelters because they didn't have internet, they didn't have, they have just uh, uh, artillery shellings on their sides. And it was very difficult to organize all, the, all these topics. And we understood that, of course, uh, taking into account that the state machine, I mean this bureaucracy machine, is, is, uh, still exists despite the war, uh, we must be very flexible. And uh, I, I also repeat all the time that uh, during this year, uh, only one possible way to protect or even to do something with the cultural heritage objects uh, movable or immovable uh, was possible just thanks to more or less balanced uh, cooperation of the state and state and uh, local authorities and national authorities of the NGO sectors and private partners. Uh, and Alif uh, is one of the main partner who uh, was very open during all this time, who was very friendly, very flexible because uh, taking into account that a number, uh, this number of objects and institutions which need support, uh, Alif uh, have supported 100, more than 160 institutions uh, in Ukraine directly or indirectly through NGOs uh, or charity foundations which operate with these uh, funds more also more flexible than state or municipal institutions. Uh, it was only the one way to realize, to uh, do all, all the things we need. And uh, uh, taking into account that the total sum was very large as for Ukrainian institutions, it was uh, almost four million, more than uh, three million and 800,000 of euros uh, during this time. It was crucial for a number of museums and other institutions because uh, I cannot, uh, speak about it openly, but uh, many, for example, evacuation processes were organized also thanks to the support. So uh, you, in fact, you saved, you help us to save uh, all these objects and to, to uh, make more, you know, uh, the feeling of sustainability for our people. Mm -hmm. And I am very grateful for it and all of us are very grateful for it. Uh, so, uh, I can uh, say, and uh, I also would like to, to thank uh, His Excellency uh, Mohammed Al Mubarak because he indicated that it's very important to uh, to action in time, uh, in times of war, not only the after, but if we can do something now, we must do it, and 
that is why the cooperation with uh, Alif is uh, so important and so fruitful because uh, any kind of support, financial or in kind, it's uh, not only about the, the money, it's about the responsibility and effectiveness. And taking into account that it could be public money, money from pub public donors on, or private donors, it's a high responsibility to invest uh, all these funds uh, in right place, in right manner, in proper, in proper manner. Uh, because uh, all the things in the future depend on those things and our choice in nowadays. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, and I will try to add maybe some details later. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for explaining so concretely and in such detail what it was like in those first moments as well, and the um, this this sort of waking up and this and your whole and, and what it's like to have your whole world change you know overnight um, I mean I think about what Mariette said about partnerships about fruit, making making contact with people you know who, who need the support of Aleph who um, I think about um, you know Dr. Maya Kamenko who's our scientific director who was on the phone within hours as well um, to find you <laughs> and, and your colleagues to be so that we could be flexible and that we could, you know, be there as much as we can, you know, from the comfort of Geneva to 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 support you and your colleagues in whatever way is possible, um, and and that this Aleph. Uh, spirit that was started in New York. Now we see this thread, um, I hope, of kind of the Aleph story and an evolution of, of what we've been trying to achieve, you know, with the support of everybody here on stage, with all of you in the room. Um, Leith, if we can come back to you um, just for a few more moments, um, because Ukraine, of course, is a priority country, as is Iraq. For, for Aleph. You've talked about the um, many of the projects that we've had together, over 25, um, in Mosul, the Arch of Stesiphon. Um, can you talk just a little bit more about sort of this partnership um, and, and how Aleph has responded and sort of this, this now we've got, I mean, with, with Ukraine, it's, it's, a, it's, it's been a year. With Iraq, it's been since our founding. So a little bit more about this, this connection that we have, this working relationship that we've been able to develop um, over the past number of years. Yes, uh, since uh, the inception of Aleph, uh, our relationship has been evolved. Of course, uh, Aleph, uh, is uh, one of the serious organization regarding its uh, work and activities in addition to quick response to the most uh, and uh, most crucial problems and issues uh, in Iraq but the real impact is because of Alif and their presence in our uh, region and uh, in Mosul and also the projects that have been developed uh, are real uh, and uh, most of the projects uh, are successful and it can reflect uh, the impact of Aleph which uh, would be left in the region especially in the areas affected by terrorism and the terrorists who are trying to defame the history of the region and now Aleph is trying to give back the spirit to the local community and now we are concentrating on through our activities and through Alevs to develop the human capabilities in the region. And this, is, this would be the real sustainability. And it's not all about 
ma maintaining or maintenance or reconstruction or preservation, but we need uh, to have a new generation who need to learn and to have entrepreneurship. And uh, one of the most uh, contributions of Aleph and uh, its slogans is uh, to develop the capabilities through training and this is it is uh, that is important uh, and this is one of the important actions of alif uh, regarding uh, the rehabilitation of uh, mosul uh, civilization museum after the rehabilitation restoration of the museum then what would happen what is next uh, and uh, what would happen uh, to the museum after the restoration of the museum? We need the real answer to this question. So we are uh, so interested in uh, building the capabilities. Uh, now we have uh, a very, a very aware generation that have witnessed the impact and the actions of terrorism. So we need to build the capabilities of our people, and this would be clear and through the next years. Alif has give support. It has not been hesitant to give full support, and it has worked hand in hand to give assistance and contribute to the evolution and the restoration of our sites. Even if we have the maintenance and, and more money, was needed more financial assistance and Aleph has supported us and gave us real support. As I said, we have 25 projects and expect to have more projects in other areas in Baghdad. Now we have more and more heritage sites and civilization sites which are extremely um, Important and Alif has realized after we submitted our needs for maintenance and preservation, Alif has appreciated and realized the importance of these sites and has set real strategy and even infrastructure for heritage sites. We have also issues in Marjan area in the middle of Baghdad because it's suffering from underground water. How can we overcome such issues of underground water? Thanks to the experts of Alif, so they can uh, overcome such challenges. And, and Alif uh, can uh, overcome such issues and put solutions and to have sustainable action. As you said, Al Madain, Al Madain, or Taisophon, this is a tourist destination. It's, uh, this region is related to the local communities. Alif has a vision of our, of our vision, and it has also, in its uh, first stage, it has completed. It, and now we are in the second stage and the phase uh, to develop and, uh, the whole area so it can restore it back to its original status and to rehabilitate and restore the museum for this area. It's not only about the compilation of a project, but this would be a real tourist destination. So the real motive is not about maintaining and preserving the heritage sites, but to have sustainable action. This would be a real tourist destination, which would incur money and income to the area. And thanks to Alif, Alif makes it sustainable and to continuing action for reviving this site and to add uh, a great value 
as a tourist destination, and this would be very promising. This is one example of many examples that I cannot count now for the even the ch churches, uh, the churches uh, destruction. It doesn't only include the mosques, but the churches and Aleph is restoring many and rehabilitating many churches for the community. It's not only about restoration of mosques and uh, but also churches and worship houses. And this is the real vision of Aleph uh, that has value to the Iraqi community. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And for bringing up the mausoleum, which of course is a very important project for Aleph and for our partners. Um, and, and to think about, um, I mean, I, I appreciate your, your comments because it starts to think about the future as well, right? That it's, you know, the Mausoleum Museum is the flag, one of the flagship projects that was the, our first, one of our first projects that we, that we engaged in with you and with the Smithsonian, the Musée de Louvre, and now the World Monuments Fund. Um, and, and so now we're at the stage to think about what happens next and to, for tourism to think about the economic impact that opening it up could have, that the training and knowledge that people in Mosul can have in order to work at the museum and for the museum are all um, critical issues that, that are, um, you know, the, the fruit of protecting cultural heritage. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, Benedict, uh, in your capacity now as <laughs> CEO and President of the World Monuments Fund, um, which is uh, a valuable partner for Aleph, we have many projects together um, in several countries. Can you talk a little bit more about the nature of this partnership and, and maybe also if you, if you can touch on how you see Aleph um, changing the landscape of cultural heritage protection over, over the past number of years. Okay, so thank you, Sandra, and thank you. I mean, I think all of us here, professional of cultural heritage, are so humbled by people on the ground, like you, Katerina, and you, Dr. Leif, because we are really here to, at the service and to, to try to, to help all those people who are so courageous on the field. So to answer your question as quick as I can, Sandra, so first I think Alif Chantrefield because of funding. Uh, I think one of my first uh, realization when I started our Monuments Fund was to realize how underfunded this whole field was. If you compare with uh, cultural, um, with natural resources protection, we all know they are giant organization, billions of dollars, and the field natural resources are, yes, disappearing, yes, need to be protected, but cultural resources are also disappearing, and they are also an unrenewable resource. And, and so everybody needs to mobilize, and this is what Alif did. So one, funding available. Of course, all of us, many organizations in this room have been doing uh, protection in conflict zones. At World Monuments Fund, we came in Cambodia right after the fall of the Khmer Rouge. We are active in Babylon. But the difference that Alif makes is that it's systematic. You have a place where you can go. You don't have to do a whole a new effort of fundraising. You can go there and, and solicit grants. And I think that's really important because sometimes, like for Ukraine, it was easier to raise funds. But for other situations, it's not as easy. And you can always talk to Alif. So that's number one. And number two is that I think the cooperation with Alif has allowed us to explore the many different ways in which heritage interacts uh, with conflict and, 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 and with many different lenses. So one is, for instance, what we are doing uh, in Yemen, mm. being active while conflict is still going on, when there is still such insecurities that you cannot go there. For, for example, at the moment, we are restoring, we've been restoring the Imam Palace. Uh, we are restoring the Hammam al Mudaffar uh, with the support of Alif and creating guidelines for the future. So I think that's a great example where we train people abroad and we are um, active through the, uh, the Yemeni partners. That's number one. Number two is what do you do in the immediate aftermath of conflict? And Dr. Leith uh, spoke a lot about Mosul and we are so honored that uh, Alif asked us to join the coalition. Uh, to look at the design 
of the new um, Mosul Museum. And that's really important because it's how heritage is not only targeted. We've, we've talked a lot about the ways that heritage is more and more targeted in times of conflict. But heritage can also be part of the solution in post-conflict recovery. Um, and, and that's what, with all the partners, in particular Alif, we're trying to do in Mosul, is having the new Mosul Museum as a cultural hub, uh, as a, a, an important component of the urban renewal of the city of Mosul. But I think uh, Heritage can participate in that endeavor, not only with amazing places like the Mosul Museum, but sometimes um, smaller but very symbolic places. For instance, we were very grateful to Alif to consider a project uh, of uh, rebuilding a shrine of the Yezidi community. It's very important to be inclusive and not only to focus on worldwide well-known monuments, uh, World Heritage List monuments, but also uh, to look at what certain monuments mean for um, underrepresented community, for minorities, and that was exactly the example of that shrine of the Yezidi community in northern Iraq. Uh, for, uh, as we all know, they were targeted, there was a genocide against them, and uh, rebuilding their shrine is really a way to give them recognition of what happened to them, to allow them to come back. And finally, and that will be my last point, you, Alif is also engaged with us in, in much longer term uh, interaction between heritage and conflict. And that's long-term cultural diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And so we are partnering on a project in Ani. So uh, it's at the border uh, between Turkey and Armenia. And here, I mean, it's been a long time that there was hostilities, but it's still very important because through heritage, we can have a team there, and that's extremely rare in that region, composed by both Armenian and Turkish people. And that means that even when um, the political tension are still extremely high, through heritage, you can create the beginning of a dialogue around those monuments uh, between people. And finally, because I think we are so late in time that I won't have the opportunity to take the floor, I just want to say a big thank you and all my admiration to my friend Valérie, because I think he's not been quoted enough today, because uh, I know how it is to lead a, a, an organization, and really all the difference that has been made in the last six years is quite amazing, that we are all here today, that so many projects have been created, that there was a vision, but there is one thing to have a vision, it's quite easy, but then you have to implement it, and that's a whole other thing. So uh, thank you to Valerie. Uh, And, and to the amazing team is gathered because it's also a field that is not developed enough. So it's very difficult to find like all around the world, the best professional to train new people. And he's been doing that and you're a good representative of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, thank you for being so eloquently um, explaining um, our motto, protecting heritage to build peace with, with all of those points. I mean, it's, in, in, in every way you've exemplified that um, the hashtag that we use, so a little, yeah. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, so finally, I would like to ask um, Samuel, Diane, and Mariette, and perhaps we'll start with you, Mariette, um, just, a, with a, just to touch on a few of the lessons that we can draw and just, you know, not thinking too much into the future because that's, going to happen tomorrow, but just just as a summary of some of the lessons for the past few years. Thank you very much, Sandra. Um, thank you, Your Excellency Katarina, for saying flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. We do everything in threes, you know, <laughs> part of our Frenchness, I think. <laughs> but we are really of all countries and all places. I think one of the important lessons uh, for our board now and the way we worked with this brilliant scientific committee that we're so grateful for is uh, evolving how we thought about what counted as the heritage that was eligible for our funding. The funding is so critical. And of course, because we reacted so much to those destructions in Syria that Daesh was uh, wreaking and also in Iraq, we were at first very focused on monuments in the kind of traditional uh, World Monument Fund that Benedict is also evolving. 
And very quickly you realize that to make more of these interventions, that it is not ultimately about preserving this cultural heritage in its own right just because it's out there, but that it's all about the people. The people who made it long ago, the people who live with it today, who may be from other cultures in fact, the people who need it for economic and tourism development and uh, s uh, sustenance in fact. And so we began first, two things to say there and then I'll stop. The first is to say that we began to disentangle this artificial distinction between tangible and intangible heritage. I don't think there's any intangible heritage. It all goes through our bodies, through our buildings, through our objects. So we began to see, for example, that in different countries, in Africa and Central Asia, we've done this, training the mud brick layers in traditional mud brick techniques. That's training a person and that person carries the heritage mm -hmm. through their work. It may be intangible as an idea, but it's very tangible as a practice, allowing for that kind of work and beginning to fund that. That was a major move we made in, in early years, led by the Aleph uh, uh, team. So I, th I think that's very significant. And the second thing I would say is that I hope we can all pull together we need, obviously, more funding. The boat needs to grow, as uh, Vice Chairman uh, of Alif, uh, Mohamed Wabarak, said this morning, the boat needs to grow. And I think a direction in which it needs to grow is expanding this range of people we see in the room with us today, because civil society and learning in civil society is critical, almost as a preventative for needing even intervention to come. We need to grow the network of people who learn, young kids who learn about why this is important in school. In my own university, we're working very hard on this so that we're not only preparing experts, we're preparing citizens to care about the cultural heritage of all and not just their own ethnic or local community. So I think that we will see components of this work layered into the uh, grants that uh, Alif makes. I think we're already seeing it, and I th I'm hoping myself that we can do a little bit more in that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Oui, effect effectivement, Alif a réussi à créer en seulement six uh, Alif uh, a really uh, have, have um, managed to, to create this uh, raising awareness. If we mem a, uh, having started with a few projects in the in the in this part uh, of the world, um, uh, nowadays it can boast uh, of having of or conducting uh, 124 uh, projects around the world. Um, uh, we need more um, uh, efforts put in order to sensible uh, to promote uh, the, uh, at the at an international level uh, alif has always respected um, uh, the the the, the uh, has all has called on the uh, the international uh, community to up uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to contribute in terms of uh, fi in terms of financing and uh, as well to uh, raise awareness about the importance of uh, of its role um, nowadays we have more um, uh, chinese uh, uh, partners who are as well helping in financing alif so, so we are ready a set to, to to work and to uh, in in in, uh, in, uh, in Asia and uh, uh, in order to raise awareness uh, in more regions and more countries and uh, and and later on poor uh, poor uh, become a, a more an active actors and beneficiaries of uh, of Alif at a later stage. We are, we, are, we, are glad, we are glad and have a pleasure to work um, together uh, more and more in the future. Uh, I wouldn't like to repeat what have been mentioned uh, earlier in terms of flexibility. I'm, I think that um, Alif is a model in itself and uh, in terms of flexibility and uh, as a proof to that evidence, uh, they would, they were, uh, uh, the evidence to that is what um, uh, Alif has achieved in terms of uh, museums. And uh, I would like to add that 
I think that the the need to to be more communicative in terms uh, in all what concerns uh, Alif, uh, we need more uh, uh, efforts in terms of building relations and networking and uh, communicating. Um, uh, 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 I think uh, Alif, it is important that Alif. Um, do not confine its efforts or, uh, on, on the on the conservation of the physical um, heritage, but as well on the moral heritage, and uh, in order to, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the uh, the foundations of, of of heritage is not only physical but can be as well immaterial or moral, and the the, the I think the 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 the, the the challenge, the most important challenges uh, are those concerning the moral and uh, immaterial um, heritage. Um, uh, I think the Alif can go further in this direction and this domain um, by uh, laying out a preventive, uh, uh, more solid preventive uh, strategies. And uh, and I can say Mali is in in, in a dear in a dire situation and wouldn't be able to get out of this uh, situation without the help. Uh, I think the prevention is key uh, to this, and uh, the Al uh, Alif can guide or can um, direct its uh, its efforts into uh, maintaining and conserving the uh, moral heritage, and the, uh, the question of prevention is uh, essential in order not to be dragged into the um, uh, zones of conflicts that we can have uh, prevent before they occur. Thank you. That's, that's uh, true, Katrina. Floor for the um, final question of this plenary. Um, so what lessons or guidance would you offer Alif? It's, it's, uh, it's a difficult question. We have to think, I guess, okay. and to think <laughs> together. But, but uh, so I, I would like just to bring to the table some thoughts after, after these discussions, because uh, maybe, of course, one day researchers will uh, sign an article or, or dissertation on, on these processes. But uh, for the moment, I guess that uh, we have a long, uh, we see, uh, now we see a kind of evolution of this uh, ways of supporting of cultural heritage from some uh, very, it's difficult for me even to describe it for now because it's, we also have to, to think about it, uh, but uh, it was a long journey from some kind of uh, very official uh, and very, um, how to say it, uh, very, not, not even concrete, but let's say very official uh, project uh, focused on a specific object, not for people, no, not not on, on on communities, but from objects, and we are going to to people, and it is a very interesting. As for me, it's a very interesting process of uh, establishing or development of a kind of worldwide uh, ecosystem of of cultural heritage protection and shared responsibility. Uh, so. Uh, in previous time, on, for example, in our country, and I guess in, in many other countries too, uh, the state was the main responsible uh, or main owner of, of uh, objects, and it, it must be responsible for everything, to coordinate, to manage everything, etc. And we are now uh, coming calm, and, and not, not very fast, but coming to quite another model of shared responsibility and of this development of this ecosystem at our level. And it, it, is, all the, it is a challenge. It is difficult to uh, proceed in time of war, but it's only one, I, I guess it, we, we, have, we do not have any choice. Uh, it, it's may, the most effective way to, uh, not only to protect, but to develop, to build for future, something for future. And uh, it, it could be uh, one of the most significant thing. Uh, so here in this auditory, there are people who are in fact uh, the cornerstones of this new ecosystem, which developed since, uh, let's say, uh, since the time of uh, uh, after Second World War, uh, during all these decades. 
and uh, we have also to, to, to think, to analyze how it is going on. And uh, I guess some very important detail we will find on, on, on this way. Uh, so uh, it's, it's not, of course, <laughs> guidelines. And uh, we will be more and more, I guess, focused on people because all depends on people. Uh, you can do nothing <laughs> with objects without people, I'm sorry. And uh, it, this uh, kind of forum, this kind of uh, analytic and uh, discussion, uh, very well discussed topics, uh, uh, must open for all of us many important ways mm -hmm. to, for action. So thank you very much. Thank you for this possibility of thinking, the possibility of, of uh, discussing and to meet all of you. And uh, I guess it's uh, the first, this forum after, please uh, not to do it every six years, better every two years at least. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. That is a beautiful way to conclude this panel. Thank you so much to all the panelists for this great discussion. Thank you all for your attention. Now there's a coffee break and we'll come back in about 15 minutes for the next plenary on climate change. Thank you. Thank you.